Well, Merry Christmas, Salem Chapel. I hope you had uh, a great day yesterday celebrating the Savior's birth, uh, gathering together maybe with friends or family yesterday. And what we wanted to do today is to just provide you with something that you could do individually, that you could do as a couple, that you could do with friends if you're watching with friends or with family. Um, and so really an interactive time that you can hit pause and me walk you just through something uh, that we have adopted as the Pereira family as a tradition this time of year. I know all of us have traditions uh, that you do. I love traditions. And so really what I wanted to do on this Sunday after Christmas is just share something with you that we do as a family. I actually introduced this to you last year and uh, just about this jar and putting some things in this jar to remind you of God's faithfulness. And so if you remember that from last year, maybe you have that jar, you have a box or something that you used as we walk through this last year. If you don't remember last year or you forgot about it or you weren't a part of Salem Chapel last year, or you didn't get a chance to watch what we did last year, then I want to encourage you even right now, hit pause and go get like some box, some jar, something, get some paper. And we're going to begin a little journey today that is going to help you as you close out 2021 and look forward to 2022. So if you need that, hit pause right now and then hit play and rejoin me. I want to share a two verses with you that are not necessarily Chris, a Christmas passage, but verses that I think really apply to uh, really as we close out Christmas and look to the new year. And those verses are Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Many of you may have this memorized, but let me read them to you. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. That word supplication means our requests. With thanksgiving... Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't want to be remiss that, let's just be transparent. Some of us, this Christmas season is a hard time for us because it reminds us of what we've lost. We've lost a family member. We've lost a friend. And so Christmas holidays can be a difficult time of year, or you can feel this tension between much joy and happiness and at the same time, some sadness. And so that may be you as you're watching today. Others of you may be looking into this new year, and as much as you enjoyed celebrating Christmas yesterday, you're feeling this tension again already for the things that you know you are going to face in this new year. And so I just want us to look at this passage of Scripture and remind ourselves of some truth as we head into the new year and use our prayer tools. So maybe you have the magnet that's on your fridge that we handed out. You have one of our make and mobilize uh, journals. And so you hopefully have been familiar with this uh, prayer tool. You've been using it this last year, or maybe you aren't familiar with it. And so I'm just going to allow us to take a, this jar that we used last year, or if you didn't use it last year, like I said, uh, use this exercise this year. And I'm going to use our prayer tool to walk us through an exercise that you can do interactively with whoever is watching this, or you may be watching it by yourself. So let's think about our prayer tool. Remember, our prayer tool comes from the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. And really the first prayers that the first movement that the Lord wants us to do, he starts off verse 9 by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed or holy is your name. So if we look at our prayer tool, there's those upward prayers that we want to start with. They're, they're prayers that really allow us to have reverence and respect and remind ourselves of the God that we are talking to, that he's our father, but he's also a good father. And so it's an opportunity for us also to give thanks, to start out remembering who God is and what we can be thankful for, the things that remind us of who he is. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take out pieces of paper. If you don't have one of these jars from last year or a box or whatever it is, take out some piece of paper and I want you to write down some things. Take some time, write down what you can be thankful for that God has done in this last year that reminds you who he is. 
So if you don't have one of these, that's what I want you to do. If you remember where you put this, then I want you to grab it and I want you to open it up and I want you to begin to take out the things that you wrote from last year and I want you to read them. So if you're doing this with other people and you feel comfortable, I want you to read what you wrote out loud. So hit pause and do that right now. Okay, so hopefully you you just had a great time uh, if you've been gathering together with other people and you're watching this as your family, like we will do, uh, you have read what each person wrote and what you found is, is you've been able to say, wow, look at, look at what God did in what I wrote a year ago. Or you may be able to say, man, I wrote this down, but God did something so much better than he did a year ago. Or you may be like this. You may be like, man, I wrote that down last year. And I still can't see how God answered that. Well, that sets you up for our next movement, which is our downward prayers and our prayer tool. This is our response. This is a posture of our heart. It says, Jesus says this, your kingdom come in verse 10, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Really what this does is this sets our response. Like before I get to my needs of what I'm asking the Lord to do, as we see in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, man, we need to give our supplications, our requests to God. But before we do that, as we look at this tool in the Lord's Prayer, man, let's set our hearts in the right place. It's really a prayer that's about, is about this. It's, it's reminding us that God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing and his will is best for your life and for my life. That he has a perfect plan for your life in spite of us living in our broken world of sin. It's really a posture and a prayer of trust that Lord, I trust you. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So here's what I want you to do if you're gathered together with a family or individually or a couple or whatever setting you're in, I want you to hit pause and here's what I want you to do. I want you to take time to pray that you would trust in God's perfect plan for the things that maybe you wrote that haven't, you can't see that they've been answered yet or the things that are making you anxious right now. So maybe you didn't write something down from last year. So whatever you have written down from the first time, from the first movement of prayers that I ask you to write down, before you do anything else, just take time and pray as a family or pray as individually. Go around the room and pray that you would believe that what you wrote down, that you can trust God with that and that his perfect plan will happen. Okay, so are you enjoying this time? I know some of you probably have kids right now and you're trying to keep them focused or whatever. Hey, just keep going. I promise you that if you have little kids, even though it seems like they aren't getting it right now and this is already frustrating you, I promise me having little kids and remembering that at one time, this is something that they're going to remember. I promise you. So let's look at the third movement of our prayer tool, which is inward prayers. Jesus says this in verses 11 and 12. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. So this is where we give our requests to God. We've been thankful, reminding ourselves who God is in our upward prayers. We've set our hearts in the right place, trusting that God's will is best, that he has a perfect plan with whatever may be making us anxious or what we've written down. We've, we've done those downward prayers. Now, our, now we're ready to give the Lord what we are needing, what we are asking. So what I want you to do during this time is I want you to hit pause and I want you just to share what you wrote down about what you are wanting the Lord to do in 2022. So, so what is it? Maybe you haven't done that yet. Write down on your pieces of paper, this is, these are the things that I'm wanting the Lord to do in 2022. These are the requests that I have. These are the needs that I have. This is what I'm anxious about right now. Whatever it is, write those down and do that. And here's something else I want you to do because it says, forgive us our debts. So maybe there's something in your life right now that, that you haven't confessed and you're like, man, I've been holding on to this sin. 
Well, part of our inward prayers is taking an opportunity to examine our hearts and say, Lord, is there anything in my life that I haven't confessed? Let me run to you for the forgiveness that you provide in Jesus Christ. And then here's a third aspect of this inward prayers. Maybe there's someone that you need to forgive. Maybe there's someone that you're like, man, I can't keep holding on to this uh, bitterness in my life. I've been operating like this in 2021. And so as I go into 2022, Lord, help me to forgive this person who has hurt me and let me have the strength to be able to do that. So just take time right now and do one of three things. Write down what you're asking the Lord to do in 2022. Maybe there's something that you need to confess, just you and the Lord. You don't even need to share that with anybody else or someone that you need to forgive. And so as you're comfortable, share what you wanna share with whoever it is, but let's take time to do some inward prayers right now. Okay, so we're almost there. Like just, just keep, your, keep your kids bridled, we're almost there. Now we're in our last movement of our prayer tool, which is our outward prayers, where Jesus says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is about reminding us that we need to, we need to be ready as we head into what we are facing. These are prayers for the Lord's protection. So what I want you to do during this time is just take time to go around and take time and ask for the Lord's protection as you go into 2022. Let's remind ourselves what we have as followers of Jesus. We have God as our heavenly father. We have Jesus as our savior. We have the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who gives us the power to be able to endure what we are faced. But we're called on to ask for the Lord's protection. So as we head into 2022, man, dads, if, if, if you have your wife and your kids there, man, pray over them. Wives, if you have your husband or your kids, man, pray over them. Pray over your kids. Kids, have your kids, if they're able to, pray for one another and pray for you, mom, and pray for you, dad. If you're individual, just pray. Pray for the Lord's protection in your life. If you're married, pray for one another. Whatever your setting is, if you're with friends, have time to pray for one another and remind ourselves of what we have been given through God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And let's just take time to pray that. And then what I want to encourage you to do is open up to your Bibles to close out this time on this Sunday after Christmas and do what we do at the end of our service. So some of you had Jude, Jude 24 and 25 memorized. Like you've been coming to the church for a long time. It may be the only two verses you have memorized, and that's okay. So I want you, when you're done praying protection over each person, I want someone in that room right now to read or say Jude 24 and 25 together. Or you can read it. Listen to me. The reason why we say Jude 24 and 25 at the end of our services is not because that's what we've always done at Salem Chapel or, you know, it's this liturgical thing that we don't even think about anymore. It really fits into what Jesus calls us to do in the uh, outward prayers. And let's pray for the Lord's protection. Let's remind ourselves of what we've been given. And so I want you to do that in your homes. And take advantage of this time that we have had to be able to reflect, but also time to look forward into what we are asking and wanting and believing the Lord to do in 2022. And I hope that this will be a new tradition that you will be able to establish in your home, just like we do in our home. God bless you all. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name. 
Jesus, the only one who could ever say You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me When he's worthy Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say He's worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me holy there is no there is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Lead me Show me who you are and f- 
fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and I will fill my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you Beside you, open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your.